Okay, so now that you've uh, went through and checked all your screws and added the ones you needed, um, it's a good idea to grab a putty knife and a screwdriver um, just to check um, if the screw is below the surface. Um, if the screw is above the surface by even just a little bit, when you go to do your mudding and taping, you're going to see the screw still, which will just cause you problems in the end. So take the time at the start, go through your walls, check for all the screws to be at the correct depth. Okay, so this one right here that's made the sound of the metal contact to metal is too high, it's above flush. So if I was to skim mud over top of that, I'm still gonna be seeing that screw. So with your Phillips screwdriver, run it in, give it a couple turns, and we're good to go. So uh, my screws are all below the surface. So now what I'm gonna do is uh, check for damaged areas in the drywall. Um, here in specific, there is some paper that's been damaged just slightly. Um, you, if you leave that um, through the mudding and taping process, it's probably gonna still be visible when you go to paint. So uh, I like to scrape and remove all areas like that. Um, I've come across this damaged paper area on the drywall. This is something that you've got to fix as well. Um, if you um, just try to tape over top of these paper ends and stuff like that, it'll show up through the mud. So uh, again, with your putty knife, scrape the uh, material at the off angle and it should just cut it right off. And again, this, this area is going to need a, a smooth patch over top of it just to uh, flush everything up again. And uh, then you should be able to see it when the paint's done. Okay, so this is um, some damage at the ceiling. Um, when we were trying to lift the sheet of drywall up, it uh, was cut a little tight to the corner, so it blew out the piece of drywall. Um, now, you've got to go through areas like this, fill them in with a thicker drywall mud typically unmixed drywall mud uh, to start and get it flushed up before you can begin with your paper taping. So I'm just gonna get rid of all this stuff. Okay, so this has all been freed of all the loose material that was dangling there. Oh. So it's uh, now ready to be filled. Got some drywall mud that is quite a bit thicker. It's unmixed, so it'll kind of glue into the joint better. Now when you're doing first fills like this, uh, you want to be just below flush to the surface of the drywall so that you're not affecting the, the tape when you go to put that on. If you're below flush a little bit, it'll bump down. So um, we'll just let this patch uh, dry for the next day. And if it is lower than the surface, you can just sand it down, bringing it flush to the surface and begin with your paper taping. Okay, so this is a situation where um, the drywall has a gap on an inside corner. Um, I'm definitely going to want to fill this in before I 
apply my paper tape. If I put my paper tape in the corner and I'm trying to trowel down on it and this inside corner is not fit, then I run into problems like that. So um, again, with your thicker mud, There we have it. The void is all filled. Uh, when I let this dry and I come back to put my paper tapes on, I shouldn't have the problem of it sinking inside the, the crack that's there. Okay, so I'm going to mix up my mud now. Um, this, this mud just comes uh, quite, quite thick um, and hard to use. You can see that I can't even really mix it up. Um, so I'm going to add water to get it to a nice um, thin consistency so that it allows me to spread it easier on the wall. Okay, uh, so now I'm finished mixing. You can see that it's uh, uh, nice and thin. Uh, it makes it easier to spread on the wall. Nice thing about drywall mud is as it dries and you need to add more water and mix it up again, you can do that at any time you need. Okay, so now that you've got your mud mixed, um, what I'm gonna show you is an inside corner ceiling joint. Uh, so I'm going to start with my three inch putty knife and my box to hold it. Just fill up. Fill up with some mud. I'm going to start just getting these screws that are in the areas that we're going to be working on. So now that you've got your screws kind of flushed up, then you use your, your paper tape right here. Um, what you do is just measure the length of it. Doesn't have to be approximate, make it a little longer if you need. Uh, because it's going on the inside corner, you need to fold the paper down the center. It's quite easy to figure out where to fold it because they've got kind of a pre-folded line on the paper. So begin going down the whole length of it. Okay, so this, this paper is prepped for the inside corner. Just leave that off to the side. So I take a little bit of mud at a time, like that. Just apply a thin layer. Now that you're done applying the layer on the top, do the same to the bottom. Okay, so I've got uh, about an inch and a half of mud spread on the bottom part of the joint 
and an inch and a half at the top. Um, because we mixed our mud to the perfect consistency, you can see how it's sticking to the wall, not dripping off, not, not hard to spread. Um, so this is what you're looking for before you're going to press your tape into it. So now we've got all our mud spread on in the inside corner. My paper tape cut to the approximate length and folded. Just going to press it into the mud following that corner. With the extra hair, tear it off. Um, now that this is all evenly pressed into the mud, I'll start at the corner here, holding the tape with my fingers and smoothing the mud out. So you can see that I've squeezed this from out behind the tape. So you just got to go along that and get this all roughly done and then you'll come through it one more time to make sure you're happy with how flush it is and, and how it looks. Now that I've got my ceiling joints complete, um, I'm going to proceed with doing this inside corner, which is primarily the exact same operation, just um, you're doing the vertical corner instead of the horizontal corner. 